Hello everybody and welcome. I'm No02 and thank you for watching this video. We are here at the nursery, veteran mode, we're doing a walkthrough. I'm going to talk about these things specifically. So please check out the timestamps for the information that is most pertinent to you. I'm going to talk about uh, just a little quick intro generalization to the hive system that's going on here. And I'm going to show you where the hidden achievement is. Then I'm going to talk, show, talk about the loot, what we are looking for here at the nursery. Then I'm going to talk about what is behind the doors it themselves. Then I'm going to show you some strategies that I use while opening up the doors. In conjunction, we'll be opening up the doors along it, showing you, strategies that, showing you some strategies to deal with all of the hordes, as well as some of the bosses. And then a setup for a, like a panic button, like a panic setup. How you should be setting up uh, towards the end so that you can make a hasty retreat if it's necessary. So let's start off with showing you the hidden achievement. If you like looking for these themselves, skip to the next timestamp. I will now be showing you the hidden achievement right now. We just slid down, right? We see the epic loot down there. The is this that? is the ventricle, the achievement's left the ventricle. So much ventricle, such hidden achievement right there. Next is the loot. What are we really looking for here? Obviously, this is the bulk of the loot that we want that we have access to behind each of these doors we're looking for totems in the exit you can find ammo medicine throwables especially if you have the scavenger cards on i think for the most part though we should never consider the potential loot behind these doors even remotely close to worth what we might risk fighting these mobs if uh, if somebody takes a hit from a zombie from one of these mobs it almost isn't. It's almost certainly not worth the two piles of copper and a pile of sniper ammo that's behind the door, right? So the bulk of the loot is here. We've all seen it and experienced it. It is quite glorious, in all of its lootage. In all of its lootage. This should come in Next, behind each of these doors. Now I'm going to tell you what's behind the doors in no hope mode consistently. I am in veteran mode. And there is a chance that for all five of these doors, there's one, two, and then three on this side over here. Behind all five of these doors in no hope mode, there will be three boss doors. A hag, an ogre, and then a double breaker door. Then there'll be two horde doors. There will be a tall boy horde, and then the last horde can be either a full-on reeker horde, or it can be a menagerie horde, where it's got a couple of tall boys, a couple of reekers, a couple of the stinger variants. I'm in veteran mode, and we can get those same exact five doors. Sometimes, though, one of the hordes will be replaced by, like, an armored zombie horde. Hopefully we don't get that, because I want to demonstrate the true thing. For the most part, though, that is exactly what the No Hope is going to look like when you're playing this. This is our best holdout spot for the entirety of the mission. Keep in mind, though, that when it comes to the bosses, we're going to want some different strategies to deal with the horde because otherwise we might get trapped in here and the bosses walk on top of us though it's really not an issue with the hag the hag is for the most part relatively easy to deal with i will show you how to fight the hag in here so now we're gonna start opening up the doors yeah, but here is my I setup i like to carry a propane tank with me when i'm setting up for these doors because very specifically we're looking for that tall boy horde when it comes to all the other things, we'll have different strategies for it, but primarily, because fire melts tall boys so well, I'll keep a gas can with me. I'm going to plant this bomb. We should get an audio cue after planting this bomb. Something there. If we don't, there's an armored zombie door, which kind of sucks. I'm so sorry. It's an army armored zombie door, which is funny to see. So let's just back up. So we might not get our tall boy horde, but essentially... When you plant the bomb, you get an audio cue for the primary uh, mutation that is in that door. And if we get the audio cue that it's going to be a tall boy horde or the menagerie horde, I'll then pick up my gas can and I will throw it at the door and blow it up. You can have the bomb blow up the gas can when the bomb explodes, but the bomb explosion is very small in its radius, so sometimes you throw the gas can and the bomb will explode. The gas can will be fine, and then like you've wasted time standing there waiting to see if the gas can exploded or not. So typically in no hope mode, I won't be standing here waiting to see what happens. 
I'll, I'll just I'll get the audio cue, I'll throw the gas can, I'll pop it, and I'll run back here, back here yeah. immediately. But now that this is open, uh, keep in mind that this is now a constant zombie spawn. Constant. It will never stop spawning zombies. Unless we are in a horde event caused by one of the doors. So as you can see, even though I have proximity and vision, which are typically the two things that stop zombies from spawning in an area, these zombies will literally never stop spawning. But keep that in mind that as you're setting up for the next door, zombies will be spawning in here. Or like a nursery, right? Get it? And they will slowly be wandering out into here. Look there. And these two doors in particular, zombies will wander down into the epic loot. I recommend that you pretty much get all of the all of your loot out of here that you want, and I would recommend just stacking it up here, putting it out somewhere centralized because uh, players individually going back to pick things up after doors have been opened, you run the risk of getting run down by zombies in no hope mode, which are always sprinting and things like that. I think we lost our gas can. We'll get another gas can. Always could use more of these. This right here, I always think you can't run up because it looks so steep, but you can totally run up this. Now we'll open up the next door. Hopefully we still get the tall boy horde. Keep in mind we got I'll our try. totem. So we'll pick up our totem. We'll put it right here. For now. I'll show you the setup that I like to do with the totems. For for when things start going south. Or you're looking to get out quickly. Can't you tell I'm busy? The next door. And again, listen to that audio cue, because uh, there is an audio cue for literally every door. And sometimes the, the bots will ping things. Yeah, there you go. We'll ping things through the door. But we open that door up, got the hag music. And now we're running over here. You can shoot these if you like. I tend to find that it doesn't really matter. It really doesn't matter. Unless you're running around, planning on running around in the middle of the horde event. Uh, shooting those doesn't matter if you're just going to hold out here. It doesn't seem to reduce or increase the amount of zombies being spawned during the horde event. But I guess I imagine if you are running around out there and things are still spawning, they might spawn on top of you. They might get a cheeky hit off on you, but for the most part, we're just chilling. Dealing with the hag is easy. If you hear the hag music, hag music you run away immediately. Just run away. My stun gun here. Come in Just run away immediately. For the most part, once the hag spawns and you're far enough away, it'll take the hag some time to come and find you eventually, giving you enough time to deal with the horde. So if the, way, the way to beat the hag is just, you get the music, you run to here, to our safe spot, and that'll sure buy you enough time to deal with the majority of the horde by the time the hag shows up. Just be sure not to shoot the hag in the midst of all the chaos, you know what I'm saying? But now I want to show you sort of the setup, the panicky setup. Oh, we got good RNG. Best RNG that's possible. I can't remember if I've talked about it already. I'm going to say it again. Sorry. We get we start off with one totem for free here. We found a second totem there. And a third totem here. This third totem could also have the escape room. So best RNG in the nursery is we get our free totem. Our first door we open has a totem. The second door we open has a totem and the escape. And at that point, remember, there's really nothing else to loot other than the totems and trying to find the escape room. So if you get to that point, I highly oh recommend God. you just take your three totems and get out. I even recommend considering getting your two totems and getting out. If you're in no hope mode and you're just trying to get some extra epic loot as you go on your journey. Oh. Be happy with two totems. For the most part, everyone's probably got all their cards at right now. Don't get greedy for a third totem. Still. That's Thank best RNG. I guess the other best RNG would be first door Here, blown up. One extra totem in the escape room, but anyways, right, we digress. Yeah, we got all three of our totems. Imagine if things were not going super well. Can't carry that with the totem. So the other setup that I would recommend here is the safety setup, right? We carry the gas can around offensively. Whoever but imagine maybe we want to get out. We got all three of our totems. Maybe we have cost of avarice and the money's an issue, but we got a lot of it. We can choose a door. It's completely RNG. Keep in note, keep in mind that there is nothing behind these doors at the moment. 
It's when we plant the bomb that the game then decides what spawns behind that door. It's when we plant the bomb that the dice is rolled. So if we choose our door, let's set up in front of it. Get our get our skull totem here, get our money here, right? Cost of avarice, we don't want to carry it around. Then we blow up, the, and then we plant the bomb. The idea is we're sort of hoping that we're sort of gambling, right? That this is going to be the door that has the extraction behind it. Because that's 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 best case scenario, is that the door we've chosen next Saturday has night. that extraction in it. I could use that. Putting all of your loot that you want to take with you out of the mission in front of the next door that you're going to blow up gives you the option that if things go south, or if the team wants to just run through the next boss fight, or you're out of ammo, or things have all fallen apart, at least one player or the team can throw a pipe bomb, kite the bosses around, and then get over here. The ladder happens to be here. You can then pick up your totems, pick up your money, get to the extraction, and you're good to go. So set up your epic loot in front of the doors as well, so that you have the option to just loot and scoot on your way out. Nothing to worry Did I not grab the bomb? I grabbed the propane, but not the bomb. Do I have pipe bombs? Where do I have? Why do I have these firecrackers? Where are my pipe bombs? <laughs> oh no, it's all falling apart. Reloading. Where are my pipe bombs, people? Okay, where are my pipe bombs? So we've done one boss, right? The hag boss, easy to deal with. You don't really need to throw anything for that. The other hordes, we use propane and gas cans to deal with that. If we get a breaker boss or an ogre boss, the best way to deal with that is ignore the breakers, ignore the ogre. What you need to do... Okay, we got we got Tallboy Horde. Or Reeker Horde. Same thing, pretend it's Tallboys. So that armored zombie horde did in fact replace our Tallboy Horde. So when it comes to the ogres and the breakers, there's no way that you're going to burst those things down unless somebody's running a mega grenade deck, a nuclear grenade deck, which would be nice to have. Because otherwise, that your most, your biggest threat is actually the horde itself, right? You can dodge the the bosses, you can run away from them. This is a huge chamber. You have plenty of space to maneuver, enough verticality to go up and down and out maneuver the ogre and the breakers. But what I actually recommend is pipe bombs are your best bet. Uh, try to buy it. Try to hold off on your first buy pipe bomb for as long as possible to get the most value out of it. But essentially, here, take this. You got ammo? Essentially, you're just trying to eliminate the horde as quickly as possible, so that then you open up all the space. Once the, all the zombies and the horde has stopped, you now have free reign to just kite the bosses around, and it's really not an issue to deal with them other than ammo. It's at this point that maybe. Maybe you do wanna maybe you do wanna pop these these uh egg sacks or whatever. If you're gonna be running around out here. But it's really not a big deal. I mean zombies are crawling out of all this muck anyways, so they're pretty much spawning everywhere. In this scenario, right, we would have we would have gotten lucky and we would have had the opportunity to escape quickly if that was the case. I'm gonna show you fighting the other two things, even though it is on veteran mode. So it's not gonna be the most impressive, but just to give you an idea of how we can potentially play this against the bosses, because it would be a breaker and ogre. It's going to be ogre, I believe. I think the breakers make a noise, have a, have a stronger audio cue. The audio cue for the ogre is an early uh, horde sound. Alright, so now we're just sort of waiting as long as we can. I'm going to keep moving back. I have four pipe bombs. Best case scenario is that you're using two for each of these horde of for these two bosses. Because we don't want to get trapped in the corner against our ogre friend here. So when it comes to the ogre and the breaker, the best things that you can do is deal with the horde first. And that way you can just hype the ogre around freely. I do want to mention there's a little bit of a way to cheese the ogre here. So you can sort of cheese the ogre here by some movement. It's a little bit hard to do with the box because if the box pull aggro on the ogre, then the ogre doesn't want to do it, doesn't do what we want. But essentially, if we get the ogre into the center, 
he jumps up right here, and then we can run over here. And if we have aggro on him, he'll jump back down into the center. Once he jumps back down, we'll run over here again. The bots make it pretty inconsistent, but for the most part, you can just kite the ogre back and forth, because his pathfinding, right, he wants to take the shortest path possible to get us. And a lot of times it's going through the center and climbing up, and then we'll just jump over here. And the fastest way to us is to go back through the center again. All right, sometimes he likes to walk up there as well. Oh, nice throw ogre. All right, so now we're doing our thing. And then we sort of just run to the other side. As you can see, once you deal with the horde, dealing with the boss is really not an issue. Oh. Oh. Never mind. I take that back, Ogre. I'm sorry. <laughs> you heard me, I think. Hopefully the audio is good, but I've been playing around with the audio a lot and trying to get it just right. Oh, man. He is not playing around now. But even if you don't cheese the ogre, it's really not an issue. You just literally walk around the map and shoot him. I didn't open up any of the wolf crates, but I will be showing. I will be making a video on all of the legendary weapons. Some of them are quite good. Some of them are quite useless. Not entirely useless, but like you need a lot to go right in order for them to make sense or work with your deck. Like you need to. Some of them you need to preemptively make a deck for them, like the Nemesis. What are you up to, Doc? Great. Come on. Still got some fight left in you. Help me. Not, I'll, I'll show you the breaker. I'll show you the strategy again as far as just timing the pipe bombs a little we bit with the breakers, and then we're gonna get out the heck out of here. You know what I mean? Hold on. Do I need to? Do I need to show you the strategy with the breakers? I don't think so. There's no extra cheesy thing here. You open up the thing. The breakers come out. You sort of are far away from the breakers. You let the zombies gather up on you. You throw a pipe bomb. Let the horde gather up right in some sort of centralized place. It blows up. You move to somewhere else. You let the horde build up again. And you throw a second pipe bomb. And then you're good to go. Hopefully by then the horde is dead. If you have higher colored pipe bombs, it's much easier to do. You know, even possibly get away with using only one pipe bomb if you have good pipe bombs. Because they beep for longer and thus eat up more of the time for the horde event, right? This face? So that's it. I think that's it, guys. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Any questions, any concerns, any ideas, anything you think I missed, feel free to let me know in the comments. And I will see you in the future.